Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. This month, our creative design team is showing you a variety of ways to create projects using a sketch from your Make It From Your Heart idea books. Today, I'm going to be using a sketch from the Make It From Your Heart Volume 5. There are a variety of how-to books in our catalog. You're going to see that there's a couple of Love of Color books. There's also a variety of Make It From Your Heart books that have both scrapbook pages and card making sketches. I'm also going to be using some bright patterns from the Party Time collection. I'm going to be using both the paper pack and the sticker sheet on my cards today. The stamp set I've chosen for my projects is called So Tweet. I just love the little chicks on this stamp set. I also like that it comes with matching thin cuts, which is going to make it really easy to cut out those little chickens. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch I'm going to be using today. This is a card sketch. If you take a look in the idea book, you're going to see that it gives you the dimensions for all of the cuts, and it also gives you two sample ideas. Today, I'm going to show you three more cards that you can make using this sketch from the Make It From Your Heart idea book. Before I start creating the cards, I do need to stamp each one of my bird images and I'm going to be shading them with tri-blend markers. Here I've already stamped the three little birds using intense black ink and I'm going to cut out the images using those matching thin cuts. If you haven't already created a swatch sheet for your tri-blend markers, I do suggest you do this. It helps you to determine which colors to use on a project. Here I'm matching up the colors of tri-blends with the colors that are on the paper pack. And this is going to help to coordinate everything together as I shade those cute little birds. I am going to walk you through how I add shading to each one of the little bird images. I have listed each one of the colors there for you on the right side so that you can see which tri-blends I'm using as I shade these images. On this first little bird, I'm adding the darker shading underneath the balloon because that balloon is going to cast shadow onto her face. After adding some of those dark colors over there on the left side, then I've added some of the paler yellow colors onto the right. And I'm just going back and forth with the golden yellow and the light yellow and blending them together to create a variety of light and shadow. Once I was finished shading the little chick image, I started to shade in the flowers and the balloon using the coral and pale pinks. The coral gives a nice strong deep shadow on both the flowers and the balloon and blended with the pale pink, it just creates a beautiful illusion of that light and shadow on that large balloon image. Now there is a portion of the balloon where I did not add any color. It's a white, tiny little rectangle. This is just to make it look like there is some light reflecting on the balloon in that upper right corner. After I was done shading the balloon, then I added a little bit of clear shimmer using a shimmer brush. And now this first little chick has been shaded. How cute is this? I love that combination of the pink and yellow. All right, we're going to go ahead and shade in this little boy chick. Now he's going to be shaded a little bit darker than the previous chicken I created. I'm going to be using golden yellow to create all of my shadows. And then I'm going to be using the citrus yellow on the glasses and on a couple of the parts of the body of the chicken just to once again create that light and shadow effect. Now this little guy has glasses, so you're going to want to create almost a look of a reflection where his eyes are, just so that we can create some dimension on this little bird. Not only did I use the lighter color on the glasses, I also used a shimmer brush just to create a little bit of dimension on his face. After shading in his little beak, then this little bird is done. He was actually really simple to shade and it's going to look super cute on my card. 
My third little bird is going to be a blue bird. In our catalog, you're going to see all of the birds from this stamp set shaded that little yellow color to make them little chickens. And I decided instead that I would show you an alternative, which is this adorable little blue bird. And it goes so well with those party time papers. I'm starting out with some ice blue colors to create my shading. Once again, over there on the left side because the balloon is creating a shadow on her little face. And then I'm going to be using the true blue to create the lighter colors of blue on this little blue bird. Now after I mix my ice blue colors and my true blue colors to create my light and shadows, I'm going to come back in with a gray marker. When you use our ice gray markers with blue, it creates an even deeper shadow. And I wanted a nice deep shadow on the left side, which is why I used that gray marker to blend with the other blue tones. On her little belly, I decided to use some pale pink just for some contrast. And then I'm going to shade in the balloon with the golden yellow and the light yellow. And I'm going to be using my pinks and my corals to shade in those flowers. All of the tri-blend colors that I chose for these birds match the Party Time paper pack. I was being very intentional as I was coloring in the little flowers, coloring in the balloons, and coloring the birds so that they would match all of the paper pattern designs I plan on using on my cards. Now once I finish shading all of the images on this little bird, I'm going to come back in with a shimmer brush and add a little bit of shimmer to that yellow balloon. And now our third little blue bird is complete. How sweet is this? I love the little blue bird alternative that you could create using that So Tweet stamp set. All right, now that all three birds have been shaded, we're going to start assembling the cards. So here I have the two samples of the sketch design. I am going to create a ballerina background instead of a white background. I have cut out some polka dot paper and some balloon paper, the same sizes as shown in the sketch. This sketch shows a quarter inch strip of paper over on the right. I have cut this out of ballerina and I'm going to be using the darker side. It doesn't show up very well against the cardstock, so instead I'm going to layer it between the two pattern papers. The flowers on the sample card lay on the right side of the card. When I sat my little chick image down on the card, it didn't stand up very well against the pattern papers. So I decided to cut out two tag images to be able to place down on the card so that that little chick stood out. So as I'm laying down all of these pieces onto my card base, using my Versamat there to help me make sure everything's straight, let's take a look at how I altered this sketch. Now I really didn't alter it very much. I did change out the background to a pink cardstock instead of white. All of the pattern papers are cut to the same dimensions as shown on the example. The only thing I did was move over that little quarter inch strip just to give an interesting twist to the design. On the sample card, there is a little bit of hand stitching on the left side. I really liked how that looked. So I went ahead and added those two little bits of stitching onto my card also. I cut this ballerina cardstock down a little bit smaller than my card base, just so I have a nice little white frame around it. Now I'm going to add a little bit of raspberry twine onto the tags to match the other raspberry colors in the pattern paper. I'm just going to loop a couple of threads through that white tag create a nice little decorative knot, and trim all of the ends of those fibers. When I added this little chick onto that white tag, I realized that it needed a little something. So I've grabbed this decorative circle stamp from a VIP stamp set, and I'm going to stamp a circle into the corner of the tag using some ballerina ink. 
This creates a nice little interesting background behind the bird and it matches well with all of the other elements on the card. Now I can go ahead and layer these tags onto the card, creating kind of the same look as those flowers that are shown on the sample piece. On the sample card, there is a little round sentiment, so I'm going to replicate that using a sticker from the Party Time sticker pack. It says, Happy Birthday to You. Once I've added that little sticker onto the card using some foam tape, I'm going to embellish the card using some of our Daisy Meadows acrylic dots. So let's go ahead and take a look at this card up close. Once again, I didn't alter the sketch very much, but just by changing out a few elements, we have a whole new card perfect for a little girl's birthday. Now let's go ahead and work on a card for a little boy's birthday. I'm going to start with a piece of Glacier cardstock, and I'm going to be creating a glitter polka dot background using some Stickles glitter gel. I created this polka dot stencil using an image in Cricut Design Space and I cut it out of our stencil film. If you'd like to know how to do that, I have put a link to another video above so that you can learn how to use our stencil film to create your own stencils. I am using an all-purpose mat here just to make sure I contain a little bit of the mess. Once I have added all of that Stickles glitter gel onto my cardstock, I'm just going to go ahead and set this aside and let it dry for about 30 minutes. Once again, I have my sketch samples here for you to see. This time I'm going to be replicating the horizontal card. I have once again changed out the background. I added some star pattern paper and that polka dot glitter gel paper right there on top of it. And then I'm going to add those paper strips as shown on the card design. I have replicated some of the stitching because I love the way the stitching looked in the samples. I did make a change to that final pattern paper strip. On the original design, it's cut at one quarter inch. I chose to cut it at one half inch instead. On the sample card, the icon is on the right side. I decided to move my chick to the left side of the card because he's actually looking in the opposite direction and I kind of want him looking up towards those little banner stickers that I'm adding, and he's also going to be looking towards the sentiment on the card. Just like with the first card, I need a little bit of a background behind the little chicken, so I've gone ahead and stamped some splatter marks in Glacier ink. Then I'm going to place this circle piece down onto the card and place my little tiny chicken there on top of it using some foam tape. Since this is a birthday card, I wanted to add a little bit of whimsy, so I've gone ahead and added a little party hat sticker on top of that little chicken's head, and then I'm going to layer a sticker sentiment that says birthday wishes right next to that little chicken. While I'm adding these yellow Daisy Meadows dots, let's take a look at how the sketch was altered. I chose to create a patterned paper background instead of the white background on the sample card. I did recreate those strips of patterned paper. The only change I made was to that bottom strip and I replicated the circular design of that watermelon. I just placed it on the opposite side of the card. I love how all of the elements on this card came together and how the sketch in this book inspired me to create it. All right, now it's time to create our third and final card using that little blue bird we shaded. This card is going to be a slimline card. Even though the two samples are A2 size cards, you can still use this pattern to create other card designs. The pattern papers on this card have been cut to the same dimensions as suggested on the sketch. That half inch piece with the little circles is a zip strip and I'm going to go ahead and cut that down to a quarter of an inch so that it looks more like scallops there on the right side of the card. This scallop tag comes from one of our retired tag collections. You might have it in your stash. I'm going to be decorating the edge using some liquid pearls. 
Before I add the pearls to the tag, I do want to test them on a scrap piece of paper just to make sure they're flowing well and I don't have any air bubbles. Now that it looks like the liquid pearls are ready to go, I'm just going to add some little dots all the way around that tag. Using liquid pearls reminds me of my cake decorating days. I remember having to swirl the top of the little dots whenever I was creating beads on a cake to prevent that little spike from showing up on the top of my dot. You're going to use the same technique with liquid pearls so that you have a nice flat dot as you're adding it to the edges of your tag. Once you've finished adding your liquid pearls around the frame of the tag, you're going to need to set it aside and let it dry for about an hour. I did choose to add some stitching onto this card just like I did the other two cards. Now that this tag is dry, I can go ahead and set it down onto the lower portion of my card base. The sentiment for this card has been cut using a retired thin cut, but you could replicate it using a thin cut you own, a stamp set, or a Cricut cut. I wanted to lift these up off the card a little bit, but the letters are a little too thin to use foam tape. So I've cut out the sentiment multiple times out of ballerina cardstock so that I can layer all of those together to create a little bit of dimension on my card. After I've glued the three ballerina pieces together, I'm going to go ahead and layer it on top of a piece of raspberry cardstock so that it creates a nice shadow to help it pop up off the card. It's always interesting to take a look at your designs as you're doing your video edits. Right now I'm taking a look at this card thinking I probably should have cut these out of Lagoon or Carolina or even a Bluebird cardstock because they probably would have popped up off the card a little bit better than the two pink tones. I do like that the pink sentiment matches the pinks in the banner that I'm going to add. This is a sticker from that Party Time sticker sheet. I'm just draping it along the top of the card and then I'm going to trim off the excess. The Happy Birthday sentiment is going to be placed right below that banner. Creating this sentiment with multiple layers of cardstock has added some dimension to the card because it would be really difficult to try to get foam tape behind each one of these letters. After adding the sentiment to the card, I decided to add a few more pink elements. I found a set of balloon stickers on that Party Time sticker sheet and I layered them behind the bird to make it look like she's holding an entire bunch of balloons. After adding her onto that little tag using some foam tape, I went and grabbed a couple of streamer stickers in yellow to match her little yellow balloon, and I placed them down onto the card along with some yellow acrylic dots. The background on this design is similar to the sketch. The only difference is the sketch is an A2 size card and we created a slimline. But all of the paper strips and all of the elements are inspired by the sketch from that Make It From Your Heart book. All right, so today the goal was to inspire you with one of the Make It From Your Heart sketches. And I was able to use this So Tweet stamp set along with the Party Time Papers to create three cards. The first card was that vertical card. And as you can see, I used a lot of the same design elements on that little card as shown on the sketch. The second card was a little bit more elaborate, but I still used a lot of the same elements in the sketch design. And on the third card, we actually made a larger card by creating a slimline using all of the same elements from the sketch. All three of these cards were inspired by that sketch in the Make It From Your Heart Volume 5 book. I hope that today's project inspired you to try something new and gave you a few new ideas for using some of the sketches in our Make It From Your Heart books. 
Our creative design team has created a series of videos for you this month showing you a variety of ways to use the sketches in those how-to books. In the description below, I have put links to each of our how-to books and links to all of the other videos that you can enjoy from the creative design team. Make sure you stop by each of our channels and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. Next up is Jayma. Her video will be added tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful week. I can't wait to see what you create 